Uh, so hi, I'm Tanisha, and I've been interested in quantum computing for the past few years, and recently the area of quantum machine learning and how these technologies will intersect. So my topic's going to be vastly different, but I'll try to, in, in a high-level overview, what this will look like. So as homo sapiens, now as we call humans or ourselves, when they started to evolve, they realized that it, we, we went through a, um, a phase of cognitive revolution, where we escaped our biology and started in understanding and relating information in groups and having thoughtful impl implications of these ideas through imagination and describing big thoughtful ideas in various groups of, and thinking about how we can evolve from just prehistoric kind of like um, chimpanzees, and for example, and into humans that have um, ideas on religion and philosophy. And so that was the idea of cognitive revolution escaping our biology. And what I think about quantum computing now is the idea of computation revolution, where we have our classical computing that is limited in, in certain cases with the hardware of what we can actually do, even our fastest supercomputers. But now we're looking at a technology called quantum computing that'll help us expand and go beyond what computation even means and what it can do. And when I think of quantum computing, I think of a technology that is able to simulate physics from the ground up or help us understand the complexity of how nature works by leveraging ideas from nature, um, true. And what I mean by this is the idea or, or the basics of how quantum computing is done is you leverage quantum mechanics, which is the, the rules or the, or the laws that we use to understand how the very small scaled interactions work in things uh, on the nanoscale. So electrons, protons, the things that we can't see, and how do they, and how do they interact with one another. And the, the main idea is there's two properties that we look at in quantum mechanics that are beneficial to quantum computing, which is superposition and entanglement. Superposition is kind of the high-level idea that you can have a particle in any situation, in any place at the exact same time, if it is unobserved. And entanglement is the idea is that you can have two particles or two pieces of information that are correlated with one another, and if one of them is affected, then it directly affects the other one. And it can be uh, massive distances apart, but it's, it's just correlated with no force in between. Um, and these two properties kind of create what is the foundation of quantum mechanics and why it's so powerful. And it's powerful because it's giving us the capability now to have an exponential amount of computation power to tackle some of the world's hardest problems. And so to kind of understand this a little better, I have an analogy that I use. So we Imagine that there is a library that's filled with millions and millions of books with just vast amounts of knowledge. And I go into one of the books and I pick out one page of, or one piece of information that I want to retrieve and I mark it with an X. Now I tell a, quantum, or I tell a classical computer to go and find that X for me. And uh, it could take the length of the universe for the classical computer or supercomputers um, to actually go do this because they'll have to look at every page of every book one at a time. But what quantum computers will be able to do is basically go into the same library, look at every single page of every single book at the exact same time, and find the piece of information or the X in a fraction of the time, which is absolutely crazy. And why this is so interesting to me is because when I think about information, I think about all the data that's being created, and as, as it was mentioned, a lot of it's unstructured. And when, where I'm from in Toronto, Canada, there's a really interesting project with uh, Sidewalks Labs, which is creating this future smart city, tr creating Toronto as a future smart city, where it's going to be uh, connected with millions and millions of IoT devices. And what this means is we're going to be collecting so much data that we just don't understand yet. And to understand this, I'm thinking, well, what if we could have something like quantum computers that can go in and tackle these types of problems. And what these problems would really go into is the idea of complexity. We have things like climate change, um, hunger, and uh, the food crisis, the housing crisis, cancer, and all these problems that we just don't have the capability as humans and as with classical computers to go and understand because the amount of information and the data and the correlations between them is so complex that it's hard to simulate and even map onto our current hardware or software programs. And this is where quantum computers will bring that leverage by going into these ideas and concepts and being able to map complexity. Because these are what quantum computers will be really good at, being able to take physical systems out in the world and map them onto a hardware piece that can understand them in ways that we could never understand before. And one really big aspect or one really big um, 
idea that let's look into is how quantum computing will revolutionize drug discovery. So how we can simulate um, actual drugs and compounds on a computer and have and see the, the evol evolution of how the um, drugs can be compounded and, and help them understand by completely decreasing the amount of time it takes for research in this field. And it takes, I think, 12 years and millions and billions and millions of dollars for funding to create just one drug. Imagine doing that on a computer that could probably take only a couple weeks to do this. And that's just one application of how we can look at complex systems and map them onto quantum computers. And so the, um, the analogy that I want to use is AI, or what the idea of quantum machine learning provides is that machine learning will be the design of the car that allows us to frame how we can think of complexity and being able to understand it by using a lot of AI techniques or machine learning techniques uh, that we um, will develop and research into uh, in, pro in providing the context of understanding and being able to make decisions on the data that we have. But to even go into and understand this data, we'll need the computation power um, to, to do this. And this is where quantum computing will become, I guess, the gas, the fuel that powers these, um, these engines or these cars to, to ma vast amounts of um, velocity, because now we're thinking about if quantum machine learning becomes a tool of the future, and I mean probably way into the future, now we have this tool that can go in, uh, probably solve some of the world's hardest problems that we can't do with computers. We have no way of biologically understanding and creating these intelligent systems where, where we can go in and understand nature and reality in ways that was never thought possible. Think about wh what the internet is today, and we, in, like, ni in 1950s, we had no idea what the computers that we were developing could lead to and, and creating something like the internet. And again, this idea that in 50 years we don't know what quantum computers will do, especially with the intersection of quantum machine learning and in, in being able to help us revolutionize so many of the problems that we face today. Thank you. <clears throat>